G'day guys and gal, there is a monkey's titload of superhumans in Warhammer 40k. You can't go more than 5 meters without tripping over a space marine. However, what might surprise you is there's actually quite a large variety of different types of superhumans in 40k that use entirely different methods of science to create. Some of these superhuman variants are actually more powerful than a space marine. Whether it be an assassin juiced to the gills on combat stims, an inquisitor with so many biological and mechanical augmentations that he can go toe to toe with a great a demon or an especially powerful psyker. There is just a ton of impressive super soldier types that you probably aren't aware of, or at least don't know where their superness comes from. Before we get started, we spend a lot of time on our computer, me especially. Eight hours making a video followed by hours of gaming to take a break from said video, it really sends my eyes to the gulag. To help deal with this, I've been using blue light blocking glasses, and nobody does it better than GMG. Other than looking like a less attractive but still bangable Aussie Clark Kent, why is wearing blue light blockers good for you? Blue light is a special frequency of light that when we are exposed to, tells us that it's time to be awake. That's because the sun gives off a ton of blue light. Unfortunately, a lot of screens do as well, meaning a 10pm gaming sesh will mess up your circadian rhythm. This is why you often struggle to fall asleep and why you usually look like death. But with the glasses on, no worries. You can literally see it blocking the blue light. This isn't a gimmick. There's plenty of science behind blue light and blocking it. And I personally do feel the difference. I get to sleep way quicker when I'm using these. The pair I'm wearing is the Optimizer because it's my favorite style of glasses and I reckon it slaps pretty hard. The biggest news is that GMG is currently running a flash sale, 40% off only for 48 hours via my link below. So this is the best time and best value you will get for jumping in and saving your sleep. Cheers to GMG for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over non-Astarte superhumans within the setting of 40k, discussing their abilities, how they match up to a space marine, and how you go about creating one. I won't be including the Primarchs on this video just because I've already covered their creation and source of power in their own video. Let's get into it. We will start with the obvious ones you know and love, and then move into the niche, more interesting superhumans deeper into the video to compel you to stay longer. What can I say? Watch time makes me moist. Hence the first of the non-Astarte superhumans are the Custodes. If you've been following me for a while, or you know, you've just got basic common sense, you would know that Custodes are dope as hell. I currently have an army of them that I'm painting, I love their lore, and their aesthetic is just awesome. They are also one of the strongest superhumans, second only to the Primarchs, or the most powerful of Psykers. What makes them so good? Well, first off, they have the best gear around. Whilst most power armor is made of ceramite, Custodes armor is made of Aurora Mite, which is better in every way. For context, the Emperor used Aurora Mite armor, and not all the Primarchs had access to it. Their weapons are obscenely good, and they don't like to share, but good gear will only get you so far. Custodes have their DNA altered on a molecular level when they are young children, meaning they don't get shoved full of organs or crude augmetics like most other superhumans do. As such, a full custodian will have the same organs and even proportions as a normal adult male. The difference is that they are just like so much better. For example, you can puncture a custodian heart and he still won't die. One custodian had half his head and brains blown out and he just kind of walked it off. So whilst having only one heart and two lungs might seem inferior to space marines who have two hearts and three lungs, the custody organs are way better to the point where they don't even need the extra weak points. The law hasn't gone into the exact science of how custody is made, however each one is considered to be a handmade work of art, which is why it's so hard to mass produce them despite their obvious superiority over the Astartes. The Emperor viewed every life as an expendable tool except the Custodes. He genuinely liked them and always avoided sacrificing them, despite the fact that they would all happily jump feet first into hell if he gave the command. The other superhuman wing of the Emperor's private army are the Sisters of Silence, an elite order of blank women, who were designed to hunt down psychers and obliterate demons. Blanks are people with a negative soul, meaning it sucks to be around them and psychers feel physical discomfort and struggle to use their powers in their presence. Demons can't even touch them or be near them. Now some people don't think that the Sisters of Silence are superhuman, just a bunch of elite blanks with good armor, but some people also think putting light bulbs up their rectums is a good idea so you can tell those people to eat a dick. These chicks have been known to kill space marines in melee fights. Their weapon of choice is a big ass greatsword, and their prey of choice is demons and psychers. We have seen elite non-superhuman blanks before, and I can tell you with 100% confidence a space marine would delete them in an instant. It's not clear how their superhuman status occurs, 
process, but it's likely a more subtle and less warpy version of the Custodes process. I mean, they have access to the same level of gear as the Custodes, hence why they're able to keep up. Did you know that the precursors to Space Marines, which are the Thunder Warriors, are actually better warriors than Astartes? They are bigger, stronger, and potentially even faster. So why were they replaced with the physically inferior Space Marines? Well, their discipline was trash, and the crude surgery they received to turn them into these superhumans also gave them dementia and cancer. Bit of a rough trade there, buddy. To conquer the stars, the Emperor needed tactical, intelligent, and long-lived soldiers who could work together and adapt to overcome the various threats the galaxy had to offer. He didn't need juiced-up cavemen who were in a perpetual state of roid rage. Hence, when the Thunder Warriors beat Terra into submission, he had them executed by the Custodes. The process of turning them into superhumans was done to adults, instead of the children that Space Marines and Custodes usually require. It wasn't clean and it didn't need to be. The armor was basic Ceramite power armor. I mean, the legs weren't even powered, so they weren't particularly quick, but to underestimate them would be your downfall. When the Imperium had to track down and kill the few Thunder Warriors that survived the genocide, those warriors would always take down multiple Space Marines before they were brought down themselves. This next one is a little broad, but bear with me. Inquisitors. Pretty much every Inquisitor is a superhuman in some capacity. Whether it be from all the chemical juvenants keeping them beyond their prime for centuries, some augmentics to improve reflexes, vision, strength, or the ability for them to wear advanced power armor, psychic powers that let them enhance their bodies to superhuman capabilities, or a combo of everything. Inquisitors have basically limitless resources, hence they have access to the best superhuman powers that don't require dramatic surgery or the loss of erections. Inquisitor Lord Hector Rex was able to lead a squad of Grey Knights from the front and kill a greater demon of Corn during the Siege of Rax, all thanks to his inquisitorial superhuman abilities. Inquisitor Amberly Vale is crazy good in combat and can even pilot a mastercrafted power suit that allows her to kill gene stealers in melee combat with ease. No normal human would be able to do that. Inquisitor Eisenhorn has taken out Chaos Space Marines, Dreadnoughts, and other powerful shitheads in melee combat due to the combination of Augmentics and his own psychic powers. The dude is so superhuman that he was able to take a high impact slug to the chest from short range and walk it off. Any normal human would have a hole in their chest, but he just kind of copped it due to his status as a superhuman. The point is that whilst there isn't a one-size-fits-all for Inquisitor's superhuman status, pretty much all of them enjoy some level of upgrade, although nearly all of them would still struggle to survive an encounter with a space marine. Bioscience, chemicals, and psycher abilities are all cool ways to become a superhuman, but it's important to remember that the flesh is weak! Or hail the Omnissiah! Yes, that's right, those big-ass mechanical hentai monsters we call tech priests are human, hence fall under the category of superhuman. After all, Belsarius Call can pop open a cow space marine like he's a can of tuna. By replacing their bones, organs, skin, and more with mechanical pieces, the servants of Mars enjoy enhanced speed, strength, intelligence, and durability. I mean, some of the fuckers could even just get laser vision if they wanted to. Doesn't get much more super than that. In a similar vein to the Inquisitors, all Imperial Assassins are superhuman in some way. Beyond all of them being faster, stronger, smarter, and more durable than normal humans due to a variety of subtle augmentics and chemical treatment, each Assassin Temple takes us another step further. The Kalidus Temple can change their appearance down to their gender and even species. The Kalexus Temple is full of blanks and is theorized to be the place where powerful male blanks go as they can't join the Sisters of Silence for obvious reasons. The Vindicare Snipers can enter a state of hibernation where their heart beats only once per minute due to their superhuman abilities. This is handy when they need to stay in a single spot for weeks or even months until their target reveals themselves. The Eversur Assassins are probably the most super out of all of them. Using a shitload of combat stims before a fight, which will probably let them outbench an Astartes in Terminator armor. If they die in this drugged up state, they will literally explode as they can no longer keep their superness within them. All Imperial Assassins have been shown to go toe to toe with Astartes. The Imperial Authorities are not the only ones who can come up with creative non Astartes superhumans. The Black Market is another option. As there is such a wide, diverse group of upgrades, ranging from the cheap, crude, chemically enhanced muscles that a lot of gang members pick up, all the way to augmenting all your bones, ligaments, and muscles so that even a skinny fat tweenie could kick Dwayne Johnson's ass. It gets more creative. Guns implanted into flesh, extra dicks, you name it, the black market's got it. 
The best example would be to look at the gangs of Necromunda. Pretty much all of them are enhanced to the status of superhuman in some way. Despite this, however, none would ever match up to an Astartes. Their enhancements can be impressive, but they are nothing compared to the Emperor's finest. Now for the greatest of superhumans, and the only naturally occurring superhumans other than Psykers, is the Perpetuals. A Perpetual is a human who is born immortal and almost invincible due to just being lucky or the intervention of extremely powerful Xenos. Whilst being a Perpetual doesn't automatically make them a beast, the fact that they live forever allows them to culminate a shitload of knowledge and power. If they are also a psyker, they can't blow up their own bodies from overusing their abilities, so they can push this really hard. Their ability to heal makes them extremely durable. For example, old man Malkador got backhand slapped by Lorga, which sent him flying and broke some of his bones. In response, he got up and he just kind of looked a bit pissed off. That slap would have instantly killed a normal human. Some perpetuals, like the Emperor and Erda, were just automatically very super, but they were special cases. The Men of Gold can also be considered to be superhuman, but because we know absolutely fuck all about them, and they're probably just perpetuals, I can't really comment. Ironically, despite their immortality and nigh invincibility, they are pretty much extinct. Destiny calls the Perpetuals to action and makes them a target, hence one by one they've been annihilated. In saying that, even the weakest Perpetual would beat a Space Marine, as they could infinitely regenerate whereas an Astartes can't. Shit like this is why I love Warhammer, literally like 10 unique types of superhumans in the one faction. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 per month give you access to a bunch of very artistic and aesthetically drawn boobies. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more super content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.